Here we are, here we go. This is Jeff Stemmerman coming to you to help you with your resume because it sucks. I'm sorry, but how do I know this? Well, I used to be a career coach. I managed the largest office in San Diego for career development and helped thousands of people with putting their, their resume together. And it's pretty rare that somebody shows up with um, a great looking resume. Two of you have them. Everybody's watching this. Two of you got it right. The rest of you have some serious problems with it. And so I'm going to come on here, help you out, um, and we're going to get this get this fixed right away. I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time because who wants to spend their time on resumes? They kind of, um, it's just not a, a fun thing to do. But what's going to happen is you're going to have a friend say, hey, there's a cool job that you might want to get. And they're going to say, send me your resume. And you're going to go, oh, shit, I don't have one. Okay, well, you got to have this thing together. Okay, so I'm going to show you a template. We're going to go through this step by step. See how cool this is? Uh, and I'll show you exactly what you want to have in your resume. If you have questions, you can hit me up, you know, on direct mail me, and I'm happy to answer questions about your resume. I've got a stack of resumes over here, too. That I'm going to run through really quickly and just give you a brief idea of, of how a manager like myself, we're currently hiring somebody and uh, when we look at these these resumes, what do we look for? Because there's certain things that uh, most people do wrong, and they really, you know, um, can get them thrown out without any any uh, opportunity to get that job. I, I don't want you to miss out on that. You know, having a great job, and it's time to do that. Okay, we just got through this pandemic, and. Boy, that was disruptive. We had 20 million people unemployed for a while. And then it was kind of like this big game of musical chairs. Whole industries disappear and people would move over here and move over there. And some people, even though their old industry opened up again, they maybe didn't want to go over there. Or now they're busy doing something else. But you may not be in your favorite place. So a big part of this is figuring out how do I get into the job that's ideal for me. Where What is that job that I really want? We need to do a little bit of assessment. And um, in my course, The Seven Secrets to a Fast Job Search, we actually go through that as one of the options, talking about your mindset and assessments and deciding how to do it. And then you have to market yourself on your resume you know, for that type of work. So right now, we're just gonna focus on the resume and show you this piece. But if you want any more information, you can also go to Jeff Snip, www jeffsnermancoaching.com and you'll be able to see that too. Uh, so let's start out here. Number one, um, it says online profile URL. <clears throat> so uh, in some cases, it's not a bad idea to have, um, well, as a matter of fact, LinkedIn, I would highly encourage you to have something on your LinkedIn. Uh, that's that's uh, a very, very common thing for managers to look at, to see your background and see what kind of connections you have. Sometimes you might have a, a, we might have a mutual connection we can uh, talk to, and I could call that person and see you know, what you're like from that point of view. So that could be real cool. If you have, let's say you're a creative and you have your designer or a photographer like myself, um, you got to have a website. All right. Well, then it'd probably be a good idea to have that website up, up here on it. Um, it mentions number two, consistent branding. We want this particular web, web uh, resume to be targeted toward a particular kind of job. Now, well, hey, I want to do a couple different things. There's a lot of people out there that have these portfolio careers where they do a number of different things, but the you would want to have two or three different resumes, okay? I know it's more work, but you don't want to confuse people. You know, if you have a bunch of stuff on here that talks about, you know, your Etsy business and you're trying to get some other, you know, IT job, it's not going to make sense together, okay? So we want to be, you know, careful about that. So we want to make sure we are consistent with that. Obviously, we want to have our name up on top, one email, one phone number, and those should be the best ones to get a hold of. You might want to put the state and a city that you live in, but you don't have to put your full address. On some of my other um, trainings, I go into the difference between filling out an application and a resume. Those are two different things. The resume that we're doing right now is a marketing tool to get your name out there. So it's not, it's gonna be customized. An application is something that's a legal document that says I did this at these times. All right, so that's a little different. And um, again, I go into some detail on that in, in other areas. But 
We want to stay away from any sort of weird, crazy, funny looking fonts and um, ugly um, uh, layouts. You know, so this should be a really clean and neat and you can see that it's very boxy and square and it uses the full space. Uh, really important. Uh, no header, no footer because it gives you more, more room on there. Um, you will notice it says up here, no photo. Uh, in Europe, it's pretty common to have a photo. And I'm actually going to show you a couple examples that do have photos on them. Personally, I think that's, a, that's something that um, I would love to see changed. Now, it, it, it's not the norm. Okay, so I want you to understand that's not normally what we do or what we would recommend. But um, it, it does give a, people a sense of your personality. And nowadays... It's super common for somebody to look you up on Facebook or LinkedIn and see your picture anyway. Why not just help them out and put it on there? So I, I don't think that's really a, a terrible thing if you did choose to do it. And, there, and again, there will be certain professions like a model. Got to have your headshot in there, you know, or an actor. That's standard protocol to send in with your, your resume. And again, I'll show you some examples of that. Then we get into an executive summary. This just shows overall, here's what I do. And these also should be filled with keywords that match the job descriptions of the jobs you're trying to, to fill out. Now, if you see ads for that type of work, well, again, they're going to have you know, certain words that they use. And it's really important to pay attention to those words. There's a difference between a salesperson and an account manager. Really, they're the same thing. But on the resume, if you put account manager and they're looking for a salesperson, and those are the key words that they're looking. The computer, which is going to weed this out, there are these computer software programs that most, especially the big companies, almost all use to weed people out. Or if you go through any of the job boards, the big job boards, they're going to do the same thing. They could kick you to the curb and you're done. Okay, because you just used the wrong word for the same kind of job. That's, you know, so these are the little details that will get you kicked out of the bucket. All right, and you've got you got problems then, all right? So we need to pay attention to that. So you're gonna have this, this statement and you notice it's highlighted, financial analyst. Okay, now when I see that as managers, I know she's in the finance department, accounting department, all right? She's an analyst, so she's an independent contributor, not a supervisor, manager, not an executive. So I wanna know what level she's at. Of course, if I've got somebody who's in finances, I want them to be meticulous. Um, uh, they need tight deadlines that would be important. Uh, practical knowledge of corporate finance. Uh, get into expenditures more than 255000 Now see that she put a number on there, which shows the, the, the size of her responsibility. That's a cool thing. I like that a lot. You will, um, we, we notice she's fluent in Spanish too. Some companies that might come in handy and it, it certainly wouldn't hurt anything. Now below that are the keywords and this is where you can go and you can very quickly adjust your resume for these, these keywords that you see within the job descriptions or from having a conversation with one of the managers about a job. So this could be really cool, all right? And you can change it really fast. So if the, if the one, company calls it a project manager and the other one calls it a strategic planner. Maybe it's the same thing, but we got to use the right words, the right keywords. So we get, to, you know, you know, make our way through that um, situation. Also, when you get in next, we're going to go into professional experience and uh, we always want to go in reverse chronological order. So from the present, working our way in the past, Generally speaking, you're not going to have to go back more than 10 years on your resume. Now, what, what you did 10, 10 years ago probably doesn't count much toward, toward uh, the story of what you're trying to do now. Uh, in a lot of cases, you strategically leave some of that stuff off because you just don't need it. Uh, it's not going to you know, help the cause. So we get rid of that stuff. Uh, in other cases, hey, I worked for the same company for 30 years. I worked for uh, Northrop Grumman, you know, in the in that industry for 30 years, fine, put it on there. It's not gonna really be um, a big problem. But uh, for some folks, you might wanna be a little cautious going too far back in time. I generally would stop going back in time about uh, the 20 year mark, um, you know, just so that you don't have to worry as much about age discrimination and things like that. Some people worry about that. So just cut it off and, and stop as a general rule. That's a, that's a good way to, to do that. 
Uh, it's a good idea to write down what the company did. One of the largest global pharmaceutical companies. Boom. Okay, and that you can get off their website. Okay, so that's pretty easy. So we just copy and paste that in there. So and then you might have to narrow it down a little bit. It might, um, but uh, that's a that's a good way to go. Then we go into the um, the job description of what you did. Um, again, she's mentioned two point billion nutrient segment uh, uh, and exceeded budgets of one point three million. That again shows me the size and scope. Now, if, if her, if she was used to managing a budget of ten thousand dollars for the whole year, you know, and now we give her one point three million, might be too much of a jump. All right, but you know, to see that, that gives me some sense of what she was able to to take take on at the time. Uh, so, let's see. We we also have um, quantified achievements. They're they're measurable if possible generated approximately 452,000 in annual savings. That's a big win. That's a success story. Most people put responsible for. Great, you're responsible for it, but does that mean you're any good at it? Maybe not, <laughs> okay? You know, so be careful about that. Um, we wanna, yeah, and, and this takes some time. You, let's say you worked at, um, I worked at REI for 12 years. And when you're working there that long, you sort of forget some of the things that you did. So it's really important to sit down with a journal and start writing some of these success stories down. Oh, that's right. I got an award for doing this. And, and uh, my boss loved that I did this. And I, I, took, I ran a team of this many. And I had, um, we had a $20 million store. Okay. So again, it shows the size and scope of it. So you see those, those, um, those success stories are quantifiable achievements. And then um, you'll also see that uh, they're bulleted, okay? So, because it's easy to read, we can skim through this. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is a lot of these, these resumes, I, I'm showing this to you on a big, I'm a photographer and a videographer, so I've got a 27 inch screen, great big thing. But a lot of these screens, people are looking at it off their laptop. And the only thing you're gonna see on a resume the first time you look at it is about this much, the top third of the page. Okay. Now, if all you see is the top third of the page, I better be able to figure out what this person does very, very quickly, or I'm going to quit and I'm going to go to the next one because you can see there's a whole stack of them behind it. All right. So do I pick this person or not? I'm not, I'm trying to do this fast because the average job out there, you should know this, the average job out there right now, when you put your resume in just through the job boards, it's going to be sitting with 300 other resumes. 300, all right? This is why it's so important to get yours right. We gotta make sure we're doing this the correct way, all right? So so pay attention, all right? And you can go back and watch this over and over again, but uh, you wanna get this thing put together and you wanna show it to somebody to make sure there aren't any uh, little editing mistakes. Because you know, when you work on these things, you might spend an hour or two working on this thing, putting it together, and oh, it's easy to miss. You've been looking at it so hard, it's easy to miss little details or you know, should I put a period on there? Should I not put a period on? Um, if it's bulleted, you actually don't put periods on there. Little details like that. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. But if you show it to somebody else, they can help catch, you know, those, those types of things. Also, uh, you'll notice uh, it says no pronouns. Don't use the word I or me because what happens when you do that is you end up doing a, got, a lot. Okay. And so I did this, I did this, I did this. And it sounds really... Uh, narcissistic <laughs> okay so so uh, we we want to sound like we're part of a team and we want it to sound like someone else wrote this about us and it, it makes it easier so we're not don't sound like we're bragging so much so so it's okay to pull those those pronouns out you also notice uh, education comes in the bottom uh, as, as we move along oh uh, you'll also notice there are no months on there on your application you'll probably put the months on on LinkedIn you'll probably put the months that you worked in these places but for the resume a big part of this so let's say up on up on the company ABC it says 2010 to present all right so that's that person's been there a long time all right but uh, the the job on 2008 to 2010 well they could have landed that sounds like two years which is good but they could have landed that job in December 2008 and lost the job January of 2010. They're really only there one year, right? So this makes it, it covers a lot of problems with people's resumes by just putting in the, the years. So that's a strategic thing that we're doing also. 
Uh, you'll notice the education down below. Uh, we want to put down our um, the bachelor degree. You can leave off the date of when you when you graduated from it uh, because that um, a lot of people will use that to try to guess your age about it. And then there's some people who got their degree. Like myself, I you now got my degree later on. Uh, I didn't get right out of high school. I, I started college, but I ended up working the whole way through and, and did the so so. I got my my college degree years later. It wasn't the normal four year path. It's more like you know ten year path <laughs> before you know I, I, I finished mine. But um, this is because I was working full time. So um, it's better if I leave that that time frame up and really they only care did you get did you get the degree or not now if you didn't get the degree and you went to some college you can you can say studied at this college this this particular topic and that suggests that that you were there but you didn't finish and that's okay um it, you're being honest about it so that's that's a smart thing too then uh, below that, you can put down any sort of technical skills that you have that relate to the job. And a lot of those you're going to get off the job description. Okay, so you can put those in. And there might be, um, it's fine to also put classes in. There's so many uh, various classes that people do online now. Uh, if it relates to the job and is going to be important to the story, that's something you can throw in there. And it's terrific. Now, uh, beyond that, we just have nice, clear lines on this. It's it's pushed out to the edges. Uh, it, it, there's no header or footer, so we can take up as much space as possible. Just clean and neat, especially when you when we pull out all the, the highlighting on here and, and these um, uh, these these notes that I have in here for you. But um, this is the basic resume we want to shoot for right now. There are some exceptions. Be careful about doing anything too fancy beyond that. You're going to see some other examples of, of this. And so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this here. I'm going to start it up again. And I'm going to run through a series of resumes to show you my opinion of them from somebody who's seen a vast number of resumes and I think it learned some things off of it. You see what your competition out there is doing. Okay. And, and you can kind of decide what you like and what you don't like by, by looking at some of these things. Okay. So if you want to just get the basics, you got it. All right. But if you want to see some different styling of resumes next, that's what I'll show you now. Okay. On this next video. Okay. Thanks. I hope this was helpful. Get out there, put that resume together.